<clears throat> well, I, I may be the first person today to not be talking about a specific educational program, although I, I am briefly. And I'm only going to briefly talk about the evaluation of that program because I want to leave a, a couple of minutes to talk about how, more broadly, how do you evaluate programs, particularly what counts as evidence in the debate over effectiveness of uh, social programs generally, but of educational programs in particular. Many of the people in this room have a program that they've been working with closely or a set of programs, and in order to advocate effectively for those programs, you need to use evidence not only that, that is uh, convincing to, uh, say, parents and community leaders that you may be working with, but for skeptics who, uh, who um, from the funding community, in, in the government, um, and uh, just to compete with other priorities, because um, I, I can say, well, at least at the federal level, there's a lot of competition uh, for available dollars. And so this question of what counts as evidence is a very important one, and it's why I want to emphasize the rigor of the uh, evaluations that, uh, that can be done and applaud groups like, uh, like HAP that we heard about earlier today that's uh, commissioning a randomized evaluation of their own program I also want to applaud uh, Teach for America, a program which, uh, like Abigail said, put themselves out there in allowing themselves to be evaluated by an independent evaluator, where while they feel confident in their program and expected it to come out positively, uh, you know, were kept at arm's length throughout the evaluation. I want to mention that this evaluation of Teach for America that, that I uh, was uh, involved with is, was not funded by Teach for America. It was funded by a consortium of foundations. Um, and Teach for America was very helpful in allowing us to gain access where we needed access, uh, but they were, as I said, kept at arm's length, and this was very much an independent evaluation. So I'll talk briefly about the evaluation itself. Uh, the motivation for studying TFA is, I can somewhat skip through much of this. Uh, Abigail already said, really, what you need to know about the program itself. Uh, this program has really been criticized quite a bit. I mean, there are people who think, you're pro and in fact, uh, I think Jay gave a nice, uh, summary of what one of the criticisms might be is that you're putting you know people in the classroom it may be actually harming children and that's really the motivation for doing our studies to test that claim um, the evidence on Teach for America is limited it's not non-existent there have been two other studies that were done but nobody's really convinced by them because they're done by people first of all who are believed to have a view one way or the other but most importantly whose methods leave open some room for if you don't believe the assumptions of the evaluator, then you don't believe the findings. And so we wanted to avoid that as well. And since TFA is expanding so rapidly, and uh, you know school districts have a hunger, and funders have a hunger to know, are we getting results for this program? Um, and of course, there's a larger debate about alternative routes into the classroom. And you know with this uh, No Child Left Behind, uh, requirement that every classroom have a highly qualified teacher. People scratch their heads going, what's highly qualified? Do te Teach for America teachers count as highly qualified? And so that's one of the questions that we can at least uh, provide some evidence on. So we designed a study that would measure the impact of Teach for America on, it's just one aspect of the program, but m measure the impact of Teach for America on student achievement in the classroom in basic subjects. Uh, we um, compared the achievement of, el we focused on the elementary level, and our design was very simple. We went into schools where TFA was operating. These are very depressed uh, neighborhoods, very under-resourced schools. We went into those schools and we found TFA teachers teaching alongside non-TFA teachers um, and we randomly assigned children entering those classrooms either to be in the TFA classroom or the non-TFA classroom. Sometimes there were multiple. And uh, we administered an achievement test in the fall. We administered an achievement test in the spring, math and reading. Um, and uh, we also did you know, a teacher survey and, and collected student records. But the main focus was on student achievement. I could just tell you probably in about two sentences what we found. We found that the, uh, the, the program had a positive impact on math achievement and had no impact on reading achievement. Now, it's important to put into perspective what that means or what we're comparing, we're comparing uh, the performance of TFA teachers to whoever else is in the classroom, whatever that may be. So actually one of the findings that's described in more detail in our study uh, is talks about who those other teachers are that they're being compared to. Um, but so you, you can pretty much summarize, uh, you know, see the story all right here. Okay. So we have students who are starting out in these schools in the 14th, 15th percentile 
of math uh, scores. And by the end of the year, now remember, if they show, quote, normal growth, if you believe the test publishers uh, norming, uh, um, th then if they show normal growth, they'll be in the same position at the end of the year. So they'll still be in the 14th or 15th percentile. And that's actually true for our control group, whereas the treatment group uh, moved up in the distribution. Now, a big question comes, is that a big effect or a small effect? Well, first of all, th this is the, when, when estimated more rigorously using, uh, you know, control variables and a regression framework and uh, uh, accounting for the, the nesting of children within schools, classrooms and schools, this is, we did determine that this is a statistically significant impact, but is it large in a, in a policy sense? And um, uh, the answer is it's, or an, another, w what might help in making that determination is to translate it into other units. It's about, um, uh, about uh, 15 percentage, 15 percentage points of a standard deviation, which when you compare it to the effect on class size reduction, uh, is about two thirds that effect, where this is essentially a cost neutral alternative from the district's perspective. It's just teacher A or teacher B. Uh, we're not putting additional resources into the classroom. So even if there were no difference, in a sense, that would uh, address the claim of are they harming students. Um, and in fact, on the math side, it looks like they may be doing better. Another way to translate this into real world terms is to think of this in terms of growth, and it's equivalent to about a month of, of progress. It's, it's two and a half uh, normal curve equivalents. It's a couple of percentile points. Um, and then on reading, we found that both groups started out fairly low in the 13th percentile, and they ended up at about the same position at the end. Sorry, they, they both increased slightly, but ended up uh, relative to each other in the same position. So there was no uh, impact on reading scores. So that's, I mean, that's really the findings of the study. I, 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 you know, there's a lot more detail, but really that's all you need to know is in terms of the bottom line. There's a, in your binders, there's a, an issue brief for the slightly longer version, then the longer full report is available on our website, and I, there's probably directions to it in that, in that folder, uh, in that issue brief. But um, I want to talk not so much about the evaluation itself, um, uh, but about what the, you know, what, what effect the evaluation had um, on policy. And the first thing to do is think about, you know, what, you know, why did we do this study? There are already some a couple of existing studies. Two other groups had evaluated Teach for America. How are we doing on time? Two. Okay, good. Um, so, but, you know, we used random assignment, which was critical. And this is, I think, one of the reasons the study has been getting a lot of attention uh, recently. Uh, we did within school comparisons, so we're not comparing, you know, across different schools. There's, there are those, we were very careful about what we allowed to vary and what we didn't. Um, it was national in nature that helped. Um, and like, as I mentioned, this was an independent evaluation. We weren't paid by Teach for America, um, and they had uh, somewhat limited influence over the evaluation. How many schools were you in, Steve? Uh, w there were 100 classrooms in, s in 17 schools in six regions of the country. Um, okay, so just briefly, so what, what effect did, did doing this study have um, on, on policy? Well, first of all, it changed the nature of the debate. Um, like I said, a lot of people have been, critics have been saying that this program harms students. Um, I don't hear them saying that anymore. So I think it's, in that sense, it's changed the debate. Um, it certainly influenced the program's direction of, of self-improvement, or at least their intensity. They had already been focusing on the reading side and had some concerns about that. And um, I think they've only intensified those efforts since our study came out um, and uh, have been grateful. Even th they said that they were, th I, I believe that they were very sincere and open to even uh, negative findings to the extent that it would help them improve their program. And then the real big question is, uh, is it going to affect uh, is it going to, you know, it's going to affect the, the funding issue or other kinds of, you know, adoption <coughs> questions, uh, the, the public perception of this as an effective program. And I think we'd have to wait to see more long term whether what kinds of effects uh, a rigorous evaluation study like this one would have. But um, it's uh, best evidence shows that, that this kind of a study is influential. Um, and it really is setting a standard not just for how you know, we think about Teach for America, but how we evaluate education programs in general. I think there was a lot of skepticism when we did this study about whether it could even be done. I mean, a lot of people said you can't do random assignment studies in education. And I think uh, 
we have some counter evidence um, and I think a standard for how to do other kinds of studies in the future.